Now, a common misperception about light is that there's something called white light. It turns out there is no such thing as white light. White light really does not exist by itself, but instead it is composed of several component colors, all of which exist in what's called the visible part of the spectrum. So this phenomena is known as dispersion, and when we pass the light through a prism, we can disperse it into its component colors, thus giving us what we call the visible spectrum. So the visible spectrum, in this case, is arranged from the shortest wavelengths, which are positioned on the left of your screen, all the way to the longest wavelengths, which are positioned to the right of your screen. Therefore, the deepest violet, if you just look toward the very left, you can just see the violets getting deeper and deeper until they're completely indistinguishable from black. In other words, our eyes are no longer able to perceive those colors of violet. So if your wavelength of violet light is at about 400 nanometers or 4,000 angstroms, that's really just about as deep of violet as the human eye is capable of perceiving. At the other end of the spectrum, on the right-hand side, the deepest red gives way to black at about 7,000 angstroms or 700 nanometers. From this point forward, going further to the right, we have gone into the infrared. And from the leftmost part of the deepest violet, we go into the ultraviolet. So what we think of as the visible spectrum is just one part of an entire electromagnetic spectrum. And many of these forms of electromagnetic radiation should be familiar to you, right? Uh, we know, for example, let's take a look on the right-hand side. We know a little bit about radio waves. We switch on the radios. And part of the radio wave band is segmented into AM radio waves and FM radio waves. Moving a little bit further to the left, we have the microwave band, the very same microwaves that we use in our ovens, and also the same microwaves that we use to transmit television and even, uh, even our mobile phones operate somewhere in this region. Moving further to the left, we have the infrared part of the spectrum, which we, I think everybody's pretty familiar with turning on a stove and using the infrared radiation to cook dinner. Uh, there is, of course, our visible spectrum, and now you can see this visible spectrum is just a tiny sliver of this entire electromagnetic spectrum. Beyond is the ultraviolet region. Uh, this is why uh, some of us have to put on sunblock. In fact, uh, I have to put on uh, extremely heavy sunblock because I just really burn very easily. X-rays is what we get when we go to the doctor sometimes, and then gamma rays, well, of course, they will turn you into the Incredible Hulk. Uh, actually, it's, I wish it were that simple. It turns out they'll actually will kill you. Uh, gamma rays are extremely dangerous, and the reason why the gamma rays are so dangerous and why radio waves are the least dangerous has to do with the energy that is packed into a photon. Now remember, I said earlier that a photon is just a bundle of energy moving through space at the speed of light. It's also propagating through space as a wave. But the amount of energy determines what those waves are going to be like. It turns out the, the energy of a photon is proportional to the photon's frequency and inversely proportional to its wavelength. What this means is that we have a red wavelength, we have a red wave and a blue wave, or a red photon and a blue photon, however you like to think of it. Well, the blue photon has a higher frequency. It's therefore packing a little more energy. But the red photon has a lower frequency and a longer wavelength and is therefore packing a little, a little bit less energy. So the energy can be thought of as proportional to the frequency and inversely proportional to the wavelength or if we want to make this a more precise representation, the energy is proportional to a constant called the Planck constant. It's just a number to balance out both sides of the equation. It's the Planck constant multiplied by the frequency, or the Planck constant multiplied by the speed of light divided by the wavelength. So when we look at our electromagnetic spectrum, we see a representation not just of wavelength, going from the shortest wavelengths on the left to the longest wavelengths on the right, but we're also seeing a representation of frequency going to the shortest frequencies on the left and the longest frequencies on the right, and increasing energy. 
And this is why gamma rays are so deadly. And this is why too many x-rays can be very dangerous, as well as too much ultraviolet. They, all of these waves are very high energy waves, and having a lot of those high energy waves pass through your body can be hazardous to your health. Or they could at least turn you into the Hulk if you're really lucky.